Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is John Addison. He's a longtime entrepreneur, former co-CEO of Primerica. He is now leadership editor at Success Magazine and the author of the new book, Real Leadership, Nine Simple Practices for Leading and Living with Purpose. And John, thanks so much for being with us. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here with your audience. Well, John, obviously you can tell from the title of the book, I think our listeners can certainly glean that Your leadership advice goes beyond the business world, uh, but for our purposes, that's where we'll focus much of our attention today. And just jumping off from the top, real leadership indicates that there are some less than authentic uh, ways to present yourself as a leader out there. I I know from watching some of your material that uh, you say you're not the only source for, for, for leadership information, but you're clearly trying to make the point here that there are generally good ways and not good ways to go about this. So what are some of the, the questionable ways we're seeing out there, and, and, yeah. and what, are the, what are the best ways to go forward here? As we came up with the title, Real Leadership, we had um, originally played with the idea of the title, Leadership That Lasts. And the, the, what I mean by the topic of real leadership is leadership where you build a business, you build a team, you build an organization. You know, too much, of, in, in my opinion, of some of the focus is on techniques to boss people, to, as I say, light a fire under people instead of within people. And I believe, le- so, you know, people will do things for fear. If they're afraid they're, they're going to lose their job for a short period of time, they'll get more productive. But the reality is over the long term, you need to focus on the person, on moving people and building a team, building an organization. So that's what I mean by real leadership. When I look at the world today, I mean, you know, it so so much of the focus, I, 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 you know, we have become, in my opinion, such a narcissistic society that everything is so me, 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 I, 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 what I want. Great leaders are, they put themselves behind the team. They're, they're stewards of the organization that they're in charge of. So uh, that's what I really mean by real leadership, where, where you put others above you. You put the organization above you. You put the team above you. And you realize is that your job is to make everybody else look good. If you shine your light on other people, you know, there's plenty of light for you uh, and, you know, recognition for you if your organization is truly growing and doing well. One of the things I think folks, uh, if they don't already know your story, can take uh, to heart as, as they read your book is the fact that you've put these principles in, into effect. You've got an incredible business record, especially at Primerica. It's one of the uh, mo- yeah. most amazing turnaround stories. So talk a little bit about the either the lessons you learned there or how you implemented uh, what you call real leadership and, and what role that played at Primerica? Well, I, pre- I appreciate that. It's a great question. I, I was with the company for 33 years, so I'm not one of these people that changes changes jobs like you change underwear. I mean, I, I, I was with the same organization. I answered an ad in the Atlanta paper in 1982. I uh, thought I would work there while I got my MBA. Wound up moving up through management over the years, going through many, many changes with the organization, and then ultimately becoming co-CEO with my business partner, Rick Williams, in 1999. And we had a great 15-year run running the company. So it was a real journey. And I believe that's an important point. Success is a journey, not a destination. And that when I went to work with the company, the founder of the company, Art Williams, was a great leader, a football coach that built a great business, great motivator. And I I came into an environment that valued and nurtured leadership. And I made the choice. I was going to be a student. I was going to, I believe every day you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotten. And that each of us each day needs to get up and be better than we were the day before that we move forward each day. We grow through life, not just go through life. 
And so the entire process, which you know, I go through, you know, one of the things I wanted the book to be is not just a bunch of theory or a bunch of, you know, here are some interesting anecdotes I've learned about leadership. I wanted it to tell the story of an average kid from Covington, Georgia, that grew up in an organization and wound up leading in 2010 an incredibly successful IPO that got our business out of Citigroup in the middle of the great financial collapse. And that really was um, kind of the culmination, the coming together of all of those principles. And what I learned is that when you're going through a storm, when you're going through the, I mean, you know, there wasn't, you know, financial storm, you know, it was the worst since the Great Depression, and our parent company was the epicenter of it. And I knew that if I didn't pull off the IPO and get our company out, 2,000 jobs in Duluth, Georgia were in jeopardy, hundreds of thousands of independent representatives around the U.S. and Canada, their careers and businesses that they built were at jeopardy. And I knew I had to prevail. You know, Winston Churchill uh, has a great – one of his many great quotes is, um, you know, he, that he said during World War II, your best isn't good enough. You need to do what's necessary. And um, at that time, I was able to, through force of will, force of energy, realizing that I was fighting for other people's lives and jobs prevail. And so the book really takes people through the walk, uh, not a theoretical walk, but the walk through the fire. And uh, the principles that I was, you know, the bedrock principles in my life, most of them came from my mother when I was young. I mean, she really was uh, the most influential person in my life. And um, and I know that these things work. It's not theory. It, it you know I know it worked. And I'm not a genius. Uh, you know, I was a good student. I'm not some, you know, uh, I'm so much more talented than you. You know, there's no way you can do what I did. Um, I believe most of success is having a good core, good values, and being one persistent persevering human being. Just a couple of minutes left in our conversation with John Addison. Yep. The book is Real Leadership. He's the leadership editor at Success Magazine. I saw one quote from you, John, where you say, lucky breaks come by chance, success mm-hmm. comes by choice. And you talked about how you need to have a concerted effort to grow every day, to be moving forward, advancing towards a goal. And while I think just about everyone would, would agree with that, there may be some out there who have tried to open up their small business. There's some who have put every bit of their money, their time, their blood, their sweat, and their tears, and it just didn't work out, even though they made a concerted choice to do this thing because they felt so passionate about it. So mm-hmm. explain that a little bit and, and why, even if you put everything into it, that doesn't necessarily translate to success. Well, you know, and, and, and in truth, uh, I believe, Anything that you do in life, even if it's a temporary failure, Winston Churchill also said, you know, success is going from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. I mean, the reality is if it's getting you better, it wasn't a total failure. It might have been an economic failure. My view is this. People don't need to give up on themselves. People don't need to give up on life. Look, at the end of the day, we have a short number of journeys around the sun in our life. I mean, the reality is we are all hurtling day by day toward an event we'd just as soon not go to, which is our funeral. And if you can see up, you can get up. And don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. I mean, you know, you can, you know, a setback just sets you up for a comeback. So, you know, go for it. Stay positive. Stay after it. Stay in traffic. Keep moving. Because I, I genuinely look, lucky breaks are important, and some people have more luck than others. But it, it, if you just keep at the plate, you keep fighting, you stay in the middle of things. At least in my life, it's, you know, if a door closes, climb through a window. Um, just keep going. Keep moving forward. Don't give up on yourself. Keep fighting. And, um, you know, I mean, if if time runs out on you and you didn't, make, but at least, 
I mean, in my mind, most people don't even try. Okay, uh, so the people that listen to your broadcast, at least they try. Even if you failed, my God, you took a chance. Stay in the game. Keep fighting. Keep trying. Very last question for you, John. Uh, in watching your video, you talked about how passionate you are about helping young people understand the principles of leadership. Uh, is it simply a matter of making sure that the rising generation gets off on the right foot and has the right perspective, or do you see an erosion of some of the leadership principles that you hold dear and some of the folks that are coming up behind you? You know, I, I, um, I speak quite a bit at the University of Georgia Leadership Institute where I went to, I went to college, you know, undergraduate. And, you know, it, it's interesting. Every generation, the older you get, you know, the more you think the next generation is losing it. I mean, I think that's human nature that's been going on for thousands of years. But I do see with the increase of technology, communication devices, the smartphone, and just everything is so, you know, electronic, so everything. I'm afraid people are going to lose the ability to, like, communicate, to verbally communicate. I mean, you know, it's, everything's going to be OMG, LOL. I mean, you know, that people are going to lose the ability to reach out and inspire people. I travel all the time. I'll close with this. I, I travel all the time. I live on a three million mile on Delta. I live in airports. And, you know, I've just noticed now just about anybody under 40 years of age has earbuds in and they're tapping on their screen as they're going through the airport. Some of the most influential people I have met in my life, in my business career, I've met in airports talking to people, people that all of a sudden I made a connection that changed things. Quit, you know, doing your fantasy football team or whatever, pull the earbuds out, put the phone up and meet people, learn to communicate, talk to people. It's amazing. I, you know, everybody now views if it's not electronic, you're not really networking. I believe the people net is just as important as the Internet. So, I, you know, yeah, I believe that it is very important. I know now sometimes I'm the designated old guy, you know, up, you know, giving you here are lessons from John from his ancient past. <laughs> but I believe those things are very important, and I want to make sure that, you know, I scatter enough seeds that the right ones take root. John, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for your advice. Thanks so much for your book. Good luck with it. Hey, thank you so much. It was wonderful talking to you, and good luck to all the people that listen to your broadcast. Thank See you, sir. buddy. Thank you, sir. John Addison is a longtime entrepreneur, former co-CEO of Primerica. He's now the leadership editor at Success Magazine and the author of the brand new book, Real Leadership, Nine Simple Practices for Leading and Living with Purpose. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.